So, as we all know, there are two teams in a Rainbow Six Siege match, defenders and attackers. At the most basic level, attackers are wanting to plant the diffuser, and defenders are wanting to prevent this. But surely we can go into more detail than this. Yes, yes we can, and that is exactly what I intend to do, with this video focusing on defenders and the bomb game mode specifically, and what the defender goals are. Starting with the obvious one, the primary goal for defenders is to prevent and deny diffuser plants, as this is the first step towards the attackers winning. This can be done in a variety of ways. Certain operators have gadgets that specifically can make planting a diffuser a death sentence. In this pool of plant denial operators, as they are often called, I would have Maestro, Echo and Smoke placed. All of these ops can either damage or debuff an attacker who is trying to plant, and with Echo, his yokai bursts actually cancel any operator they hit from the act of planting the diffuser itself. Now, as you might imagine, this is especially powerful for obvious reasons. As long as Echo's alive and still has yokais available, planting the diffuser is near impossible unless he's the only one left defending, in which case it can be argued that he can struggle to both cancel the diffuser plant and go for the kill. The same can be argued for Maestro in terms of plant denial, however, whose evil eyes can do damage to a planting attacker if they're not being covered by a teammate. Smoke, who for the longest time has been a powerhouse of an operator in competitive play, is able to area denial for extended periods of time like no other operator can, as trying to plant whilst being gassed is just not gonna happen. Whilst these three operators are the key picks for denying plants, other operators can be highlighted as being extremely useful at making planting a pain for the attackers. Mirror stands out as one, alongside generally any operator able to bring along C4, as these are particularly great against stationary, aka planting, targets. However, on the goal of preventing a plant from happening, it has to be said that simply staying alive in a defensive round can be enough. This keeps the attackers on edge about where you might be and what you might be doing, and therefore, sometimes, this can completely prevent players from feeling safe enough to go for the plant, with you still alive and on the map. On to the next defensive goal, which is playing for time. As a defender, the round's timer actually works in your favour, as long as the diffuser isn't planted yet. With the round clock constantly ticking down, it's the attackers who are pressured to push, clear rooms and get the objective plant. Here, many factors can slow the attacker's plans down. A key factor that can buy time is the activity of your roamers. This role is as it sounds. You roam the map and try to gather information and get kills. But if you can't get the kills, simply buying time can be enough of a help for the team, given the advantage your team has with the round clock. Firing off random shots to keep attackers focused on you, staying alive so that attackers will need to deal with you before going for the plant, and more can buy a lot of rounds time for the defenders, and this is totally worth it. In the same vein, as a defender, you should be keeping an eye out on how much time is left in a round, as it should definitely impact how you play, with your play changing according to the time and situation. If plenty of time is left in a round, for example, playing risky is kind of silly when you think about it. If you make a risky play, for example, like running out with incomplete information early on, and the risk doesn't pay off and you get killed doing nothing, that's one less problem the attackers have to deal with before being able to go for the plant. This may seem like an obvious point, but the attacker's job gets a lot easier the less defenders are left alive. I know, I know, it's very obvious when stated that way, but the way some people play, specifically roamers a lot of the time, it's clear that they're not taking this point into consideration, and are instead focused on just getting kills. Kills are great, but only if they're safe and easy to take. If it's late in the round, and time is running out for the attackers, and they haven't planted yet, it's better, once again, for the defenders to avoid fights, and again, play safe, in order to reduce the chance that the attackers can secure the win through taking out all of the defenders. 
Of course, you still want to be watching out for plant attempts, but peeking from cover when they're not planting is just not necessary. The only time, in my eyes, that the defensive playstyle really changes is when the attackers actually get the plant down and time starts to run out to disable the diffuser. With the diffuser active, the attackers essentially become the defenders and vice versa. This means, as you probably guessed, it's the attacker's turn to play safe and cover the objective and play around the objective and the round clock, and the defender's task to push, take risks to get kills, and to prevent the diffuser completing. So, we've covered how defenders should be focused on denying plant attempts and playing with the round clock in mind and playing for time. The last defender goal I would like to cover in this video is the goal of figuring out what strategy the attackers are going for. Now this can, I will admit, sometimes be very hard to do. In both casual and ranked play, it can often be the case that the attackers are not actually going for any specific plan or strategy. They can just be running into the building, looking for kills, or doing completely uncoordinated and separate things. When this is the case, it can be enough to simply note what areas of the map are being droned out, and from this drone movement, possibly predict where pushes of indeterminate strength might be coming from. See a drone downstairs? Maybe you can expect someone to enter down there. See a drone top floor? Presumably that's there for a reason. If you start to see patterns in the information that you're gathering, then in these cases, there might be a specific strategy behind them. Repeated droning attempts on one side of the building could hint at a possible push from that direction. It's also worth noting, of course, that based on your defenses and setup, and where your operators are being positioned on defense, the attackers might choose to adjust their initial plans. When drones stop appearing where you are, and no attacker activity can be seen or heard, maybe they've switched gears and moved to another possible entry point that's easier for them to work with. If you're roaming, you're more likely to be able to hear attacker movement and actions, and from this audio information, deduce what they might be attempting. If you're an anchor, on the other hand, it's up to you to use defender cameras of all kinds to spot drone movement which, as mentioned, could suggest at future attacker pushes. And there we have it for defender goals. As a defender, everything you do should be aimed at accomplishing one of three things. Denying plant attempts, wasting attacker time, and figuring out attacker movement and strategy. I do hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next one, where we'll be covering attacker goals.